Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see we are picking back up exactly where we stopped the last time. As a brief recap, with my updated strategy we were able to absolutely dominate World War II. We finished with an incredibly low casualties, 14,000 versus over 2 million from the Allies and we puppeted most of Europe. Now our army and our industry are absolutely insane and we are getting ready for Barbarossa. Before that though, I miss home, so we will briefly stop by in Italy to check how Benito is doing. Now this video will be edited, but I will also release the unedited version shortly after, so that you can see each step in detail, like in the previous guide. Keep in mind that uh, you can find the research and focus priorities in the description of the video, and that you can access my exclusive spreadsheets by getting a tier 2 membership to the channel. Now one last thing before we start, if you are enjoying the content I make, Please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It would really help the channel grow faster, which means I will be able to dedicate more time to it and make more content for you guys. Now that being said, let's start preparing for Italy and for the Soviet Union. When I say that we dominated World War II, what I meant is not just uh, defeating the Allies, uh, I mean that's, that's easy, but in addition to the Allies, as you can see here, we puppeted uh, most of Europe uh, and not only Europe, we puppeted uh, all of the Allies entirely. So now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to pick the focus. Uh, in the previous video I said to pick a continuous focus. I actually meant to pick the not the construction repair but the air production I misclicked. In any case uh, I changed my mind. I also updated the spreadsheet and I think it's now better to pick uh, a war with the USSR immediately even during the war. We're going to pick it now slightly later but it doesn't matter. Um, and then we're going to go for this one, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, and then uh, the improved national spirit. Um, and uh, this one I think is pretty convenient for us because in the Soviet Union we'll, we'll want to build a lot of infra infrastructures and railways uh, to, bring, uh, to bring supplies to our armies. Uh, but first of all we need the claim, so this one is uh, the absolute priority. Okay, then uh, we of course, uh, of course we need to adjust uh, trade, uh, but we need to, s to wait for uh, like a second, okay. Because uh, of course we don't need uh, to import uh, resources anymore, oh, we actually need to import some steel, because uh, we didn't get enough. Uh, not a big issue, because uh, very soon uh, we're going to get it from uh, the Soviet Union. For the... in the meanwhile, uh, or in the meantime, uh, let's get some from Spain. And uh, that's not enough, huh? Actually, we need to adjust maybe the production a little bit uh, too, so this may actually change. Let's see what we need to do in terms of production. So we bring the infantry equipment production uh, to 25. The F2 production to 75, C2 to 25 as well, T2 we keep it at 150 as it is already, and then we start producing uh, mechanized, uh, we actually don't have it yet so we'll need to wait for a few days before we get mechanized. As soon as we get mechanized we start producing it. Uh, another 150 mechanized. Meanwhile though we want uh, the priority to be on uh, the other stuff we said, so the last slot uh, which will soon be for mechanized uh, will have a bit less factories. Now at this point uh, uh, trade should probably should probably be entirely fixed, yeah we don't need to import anything, perfect. Uh, I will make some adjustments to the dockyards this is not entirely mandatory but I suggest you increase uh, the amount of dockyards used for repairs I bring it to the maximum, I don't care. So that we repair our new uh, incredibly big fleet, as you can see here. By the way, we don't need them to protect uh, the channel anymore. And for now, we are not going to unblock uh, these sea regions. Because, uh, yeah, technically we could send our fleet and fight against Italy, but uh, I, I don't want to do so. So, just so that uh, Italy doesn't raid us, uh, I prefer not to have our fleets around or convoys around. 
And in, term of, in terms of production, we don't really need to build uh, submarines anymore. So we're just going to finish the ones that we are already building. And then uh, we're going to start making convoys instead. And we're going to make some... Uh, let me remove this fleet tab because uh, I look like uh, I look like the UK when uh, they are playing the AI with 1 billion different armies without anything assigned to them. Uh, we're going to make some adjustments to our Panzer Division because now we have plenty of tanks so we can afford to make uh, this uh, change here. Increase the combat width uh, to 36. 35 is actually slightly better but it's totally fine. We are going to increase our overall stats by adding two tank battalions. So we're very happy with this. We're going to make this change. And then we are going to start building uh, infrastructures uh, and uh, uh, air airfields uh, at the border with the Soviet Union. Now we're already building in this area. But we're going to build a bit more. Especially I want uh, uh, some air bases here. We will have plenty of planes, so we just need uh, the airports to position them. And it may also be a good time to start upgrading the railways, especially in this northern part, uh, since we are going to go through here. Yeah, something like this uh, should be fine. Let's maybe upgrade the previous ones too. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we will ever get there because there is quite a lot of stuff that we are building. But we also have an insanely big amount of uh, civilian factories, uh, so we may actually get there. Now we're going to prepare our armies uh, for Italy. Uh, our main army is still in the UK. Just defeated the UK. We're going to send our tanks to Italy and we're going to prepare an offensive order. The idea is to split Italy into two, but I don't like this uh, arrow in this way. Yeah, let's go for something like this. Uh, of course, we're going to send uh, motorized uh, uh, with them, as usual. We'll also send a defensive army over. It's probably not needed, but just in case. Uh, and then I will send another defensive army to uh, Greece, because uh, Italy actually usually declares wars on, uh, war on Greece, so we need to be ready, just in case they are faster than us, or they eventually attack them. Our other infantry, the main infantry, can be ready at the border with the Soviet Union, we are not going to use them for now. We will need uh, at least two infantry armies there, so I'm going to send the second one here, just as a backup, to be ready for the Soviet Union. Then we are going to do, uh, we are going to start some uh, uh, training. So first of all, I want to deploy all of the planes that we have uh, stored. We still may have some. Let's make sure to assign all of them uh, to our main army. And then uh, we also have these transport planes. We're probably not going to need them in uh, in Italy, but they will be quite convenient in the Soviet Union. But in case, I will just assign them to the northern part of Italy too. The other thing we want to do with planes, actually, before the war starts, is we may want to train all of them. We're also going to train all armies, although uh, they are probably already pretty much trained. Can unblock this region and uh, uh, gather our navies. So for now, we'll create just one uh, big navy and then uh, we'll take care of them. But we can also tra train them for now. I don't think Italy will come all the way up here to annoy us. And then we had a spy in the UK, and we're not done with the, the third collaboration government in the Soviet Union yet. 
But with this last spy, I would suggest starting a spy network uh, in the United States. Uh, uh, probably in this area, because I'm thinking about going from uh, Canada this time. But we'll see. In any case, that will not be part of this episode. But we can start getting ready for it. Okay, and that's all. We can uh, save, maybe, because the setup is done at this point. And then we can start getting ready for Italy. Our fleet is insanely big. Okay, we got our claim on Italy, we just need to wait for our army to get in position. Of course, this happens uh, after you finish the war with Germany, so uh, we will be struggling for a little bit uh, in terms of uh, civilian factories, but that's totally fine. Okay, we finished uh, researching mechanized, uh, meaning we are going to start producing them. So I will replace uh, this tank. Uh, I don't think there is anything new about this one. What's different? Okay, let's... I uh, wonder what they changed about this one, but okay, let's make this one then. Yeah, so we're just going to remove this. And we're going to start producing as many mechanized as possible. That's perfect. going to use the political power to assign uh, some more medals because we don't really need uh, political power at this point. Okay, I would say we are ready for Italy, so let's uh, pay Benito our respects. Let's go. Now, the first push is in the mountains, but uh, I have the feeling that our tanks will not care too much about it. Mind that we don't even have air support at the moment, because uh, our planes are probably slowly moving in position. Well, we have some, but not full. But uh, I would say our tanks are not struggling too much. So Italy has a lot of divisions in here. <laughs> See, Italy declared war on uh, Greece, but we were ready for that. So we're going to be fine. It's not like Italy doesn't have divisions, but uh, we're just destroying them. Our casualties are at 1000, our casualties are already at 190. Okay, okay, but this is not good, guys. I want you to keep going here. Okay, perfect. And we split them. There we go.
I'm not even doing anything, just to show you how strong these tanks are. I'm not uh, micromanaging at all. I just gave the first order and then I'm just uh, looking at what is happening. And this, uh, in practice, means 2,000 casualties versus 300,000. I must say they are doing a pretty good job with encirclements by themselves. Okay, let's give them some uh, time here to rearrange a little bit. We also need to give Italy some time to realize that they are fucked so that they depose Mussolini. Uh, in terms of the navy, you do whatever you want, but I think at this point uh, we would better go through these doctrines because we now have a proper fleet. We're not uh, using submarines as much anymore. As for this extra army, it's not important at all what you do with them, uh, but uh, what I would do is I would set them on... Uh, yeah, not on this navy. I would set them on area defense. And I would assign to the coastline of Germany. And that's it, we can, uh, can actually forget about them. We can put all of our puppets' armies uh, in here, in future. You want me to pick? I have one more land doctrine to pick, so... I'm going to save uh, army experience. Oh. Our planes were still training. Ideally, you want uh, the trains to uh, the planes uh, to stop uh, training when you assign them to to fight in Italy. Okay, we can continue. Okay, Mussolini is uh, deposed, so this war will be over very soon. That's unfortunate. This guy tends to get wounded a lot, uh, and that's weird because uh, he doesn't have the trait. Sometimes they have a trait that makes them more likely to be wounded. 89 days is quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to have to replace you, boy. Yeah, it's sad, but... This guy will be there in 15 days. It's not ideal. The stats of the general are very important, so... Okay, this message, we're just going to take more stuff from uh, Denmark. 3,000 casualties versus 500,000. Not going to complain. Not going to complain. Okay, and I believe this is the end of the war because we already conquered most of Italy, unless they want us to go all the way to Palermo, so we will need to check. Uh, meanwhile, uh, okay, about tanks, uh, I don't like uh, the last two perks in the MIOs, so I just leave them as they are now. Let's skip this message. As for the war, well, let's assume the war is going to end now. It would be 4,000 casualties versus 500,000. Let's see if uh, it ends now or not. It, it will, okay. So, 4,000 casualties to take Italy. Nice. We're going to take their navy and we're going to puppet them. We need to do it uh, separately, unfortunately. There is no option to puppet uh, all of Italy. So, we're going to do it uh, in uh, this way. Uh, we also want uh, the resource rights. Let's do that a bit at a time. Well, I don't have enough points for everything. That's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, this is because of this uh, civil war thing. But the important thing is that we puppeted everything. Yeah, so that's that's okay. Maybe I could have saved a bit uh, on the navy and took more resources, but it's totally fine. Okay, so now all of Europe, uh, at least uh, Central Europe, uh, is uh, under our control. Well, Denmark is our puppet too, right? Yeah. 
Okay, now we need to get ready for the Soviet Union. Let's see how long we have on the focus. Not that much. So the timing is uh, quite right. Of course, we are not forced to start a war on the Soviet Union as soon as this focus is completed. We can wait a little bit longer. Uh, but meanwhile, let's start preparing our armies. So of course, we're going to make uh, the first uh, big push with our tanks. And uh, my idea here is to go for something like this. So hopefully, ideally, we will encircle some units in here, but then especially we'll uh, create uh, this uh, spearhead into the enemy uh, land. And then from here we can uh, try to create more encirclements. We want uh, motorized uh, to follow, of course, uh, and we already want uh, a defensive army to be there with them. Not this army, but this army. And we're probably going to use uh, both uh, defensive armies and uh, both uh, regular armies uh, to follow on uh, our tanks. We just don't want to send too many divisions at once, uh, because otherwise we'll struggle with uh, supplies. By the way, speaking of supplies, let's, me let's make sure that everyone has uh, the highest motorization priority possible. I would also like these tanks to be ready, and they're almost ready, so that's perfect. And this time uh, I am going to assign the planes there manually because I actually want them to be ready uh, at the beginning of the war that would be quite convenient I believe so Now I believe we can also start uh, unblocking these uh, naval regions because uh, we shouldn't have issues with them anymore And in this area, we actually want the extra supplies uh, which our navy can bring. So we're going to have to set up the navy a little bit. For now, we're going to stop training them and we're going to send them to this area. Then we will adjust them a little bit. Okay, now in terms of uh, planes, I'm going to send uh, somewhere far so that they are not in the way the ones I do not need okay, tactical bombers what is this thing whatever it fights so it's fine close your support naval bombers are leaving okay everything else will be assigned to our main army Okay, wait, I thought I removed you. Just, just go away, I don't want to see you. Okay, now these ones, uh, we can uh, probably train them and we also need to split them around a little bit more because uh, as you can see, this uh, place is filled. No. Sorry. Yeah, he didn't mean to do that. But actually, uh, this may not be a bad idea, so we reduce a little bit the air wings. Okay, now they're ready. Let's uh, train all of them. We also want to uh, our secondary tank army to be a bit closer to the front, not too close, because we don't want them to steal our supplies, but a bit closer, yes. Okay. 
Oh, nice. We can take the last uh, doctrine. Perfect timing. So we have fully unlocked the uh, doctrines for Barbarossa. And we can also finish unlocking our ear doctrines. Okay, we are ready for the war against the Soviet Union. Need to keep an eye on that spy. I will surely forget about that spy. I know that already. Okay, let's continue with focuses. Okay, we don't have full supplies in here and that's something I do not like. But maybe there is nothing we can do about it right now. Maybe uh, removing our fleet from here would help because uh, this is surely a lot of supplies. So let's uh, fix uh, the uh, fleet a little bit. What we want to do is uh, we want to definitely create uh, more task forces because these ones are way too big. This may be already better. So we can keep one in here, but then uh, let's send one here, one here, and one here. Now ideally we want to create uh, a new theaters for them, but uh, that's okay. What I want to do is I want this one on convoy escort. And I want these ones to be on strike force. Okay, something like this should be good. But let me assign these uh, to a, at least to a new to a new general. Admiral. Let me assign these ones to a new admiral. And this one maybe will uh, distribute it more evenly so that they are better at uh, escorting our convoys. Okay, I like this. Now let's see if this uh, helps with the supplies for tanks. Eh, eh. Could be better. We still don't have full infrastructure, so we can wait a little bit uh, before we go for the for the war. The railways uh, should also help a lot. Uh, so let's wait at least until we are finished with these uh, buildings before we start the main offensive. Having supplies at the beginning is very important. So. It's uh, worth uh, waiting a little bit more. Also, railways build uh, very quickly, and our planes will also be allowed to be a bit closer as we build more airfields in here. We can prepare the extra supplies in here. And maybe if uh, we get uh, Heinz uh, back, uh, that would also be nice. Uh, how is the guy doing? 58 days, god damn it. Yes, no Heinz for now. Speed up just a little bit. Also, I mean, attacking the Soviet Union is November may not sound like the greatest idea, so we may want to wait a bit longer. <clears throat> it depends. If you're in a hurry here, you can go for the Soviet Union. For our strategy, we are going pr probably going to wait for spring at this point. Maybe in March we can start the offensive. Although, guys, this is a separate topic, completely unrelated, but uh, I don't know if you're following the, the war in Ukraine. I find it very interesting that uh, Russia always attacks... Uh, this will only be part of the uh, unedited version, of course. Uh, Russia always attacks uh, in, uh, in winter. And that's probably because the terrain gets actually better for tanks, for armored divisions, when uh, it's uh, frozen than when it is muddy in spring. So maybe attacking the Soviet Union in winter is not such a bad idea after all. That is of course uh, more in uh, real life than in the game. Uh, now we're not going to build anything else for now, so we're going to waste uh, some uh, of our factories. Uh, 
But I want them to be free to build uh, infrastructures and railways immediately as we uh, start conquering land in the Soviet Union. We can start building a, a few more infrastructures in here, but uh, overall I want them to be free. Did we fix the issues with supplies? Almost, yeah. 97, 96, come on. Just need a few more railways. Let me just check the railways and if they are fine, uh, yeah, they're already at max level. It's simply that we have a lot of divisions in here. Oh, these guys are too far. You can probably go a bit closer now. Okay, our planes are ready, so... I will save, but I think, I think we can start. Let's try pushing the Soviet Union in winter and see how it goes. Right. Okay, let's go the down a little bit i think they have some forts in here so i think we can go for this one to make it a little bit easier at first not that we need it it seems but this is a very very good uh, first push big encirclement already that's annoying. Oh no, keep pushing them. I will uh, stop the offensive at this point. I will manage it uh, manually because I want to make sure that they take uh, only what I tell them to take. Now the question is, uh, will there be anyone in here? Let's find out. Ausrücken. Casualties after the first push. <laughs> Not bad, right? 290 versus one, uh, 115,000. Okay, now let's rearrange our tanks and uh, prepare them for the next push. Uh, now, when pushing uh, something like the Soviet Union, when you know you don't have the best supplies, uh, what I suggest doing is always pushing for a supply hub. You know, this is quite obvious. Most of you probably already know it, but it's a very good tactic. So next, we are going to go for these supply hubs in here. How is Heinz? I want Heinz back. Another month. Okay, let's do one more push with this guy then. Something like this uh, should be good. Now, motorized, I want it to be with them, and then I will uh, rearrange a little bit our uh, infantry. So I think it's okay to have one infantry army on the entire front. But then I also want the defensive armies uh, to be a bit more split, like one for this area and one for this area. Then we are going to use the secondary tank divisions uh, to push uh, down here a bit later. So here we could push easily, but I want to create a bigger, a bigger encirclement, so we are going to go for Minsk going to go probably for something like this. 
So we prepare them like here. Would be nice to be able to plan the offensive while seeing the supply hubs. In any case, it's Minsk here and here. You can kind of see them from the map, but uh, I didn't take Minsk. That's not bad. That's not ideal. Take Minsk, please. <laughs> That's better. And as I said, we are keeping the free uh, factories because we want to build uh, infrastructures uh, and uh, railways uh, as soon as possible in all of this new land. We cannot build the railways yet, though. How are we doing in terms of uh, fighters? They have quite a lot uh, and they are losing quite a lot, so they will not have a lot for much longer, I have the feeling. Of course, uh, the reduced uh, supply consumption in the Soviet Union is very convenient, so the more we have, the better it is. And it may be worth uh, checking the spy network because they're almost done. Yeah, probably at the end of this focus uh, would be a good timing. Now, look at this, uh, and that's what I was talking about. By pushing just uh, up to the supply hubs, uh, but not more than that. Uh, now, our divisions are supplied, uh, but as you can see, the Soviet divisions are struggling for supplies because the closest supply hub uh, to them is pretty far, and uh, we got uh, two of them close to each other. That's really a good strategy to manage supplies a bit better. 95% is pretty good, so I think we can uh, start uh, this second push. Let's go. What we need to do is, uh, we may be a good time to start assigning the planes to the army, actually, so they self-deploy a little bit better. Soviet Union doesn't seem to have uh, a large amount of divisions, for some reason. Probably they just positioned them poorly. Uh, uh, uh. You, need, you need to finish this one. So. Looks like there's nothing in here. Let's see. Okay, and I don't want them to push any further, so up here. Again, we got the two supply hubs, uh, but we need to make sure that they are connected. So, yeah, they're not connected with each other, but it's okay, they are connected to the other ones, so that's fine. <clears throat> now, with this army, we can start planning the next push, which is going to be for Leningrad already. We can go from here. Novgorod doesn't have a supply hub. Okay, that's annoying. So, we want to get that one, actually. It's not the best offensive line, but it will work. Now, ideally... Ah, no divisions. I did not assign them. Okay, that wasn't very smart. So, let's switch the generals now, because I think uh, Heinz will be back soon. Exactly, so... 
can send Eric to the secondary army and we can assign a high inspect to the main army. So here we said we wanted to go for something like this. Uh, that's perfect. Uh, now the front is becoming a bit uh, larger, so I'm going to assign uh, the secondary infantry to the southern part of the front. It would be nice uh, to counter uh, their bombers in here. Let's see if we can uh, have some dedicated fighters for that. Maybe a couple more uh, in here. Very important to always build uh, infrastructures uh, and uh, upgrade uh, the railways as you expand. See all these uh, level 1 railways uh, can be upgraded and it is cheap to do so. It's worth it. Ah, let's check the casualties. Uh, oh, 11,000. That's actually fairly high. I wonder how we got them. Maybe it's uh, from the Navy. They may be raiding our convoys uh, somewhere. But that's fine. Not actually ready for the collaboration government yet. Not soon. So this uh, focus is actually perfectly timed because, as you can see, we are now building a lot of infrastructures, so it's pretty good. Next, we are going to improve the national spirit. Uh, we'll get a nice uh, daily political power boost. Now, one thing we want to keep an eye on is uh, the mechanized equipment. Because when we get to about 8,000, so we still need a little bit more, we can replace all of the motorized uh, with mechanized uh, in our army. All right, we also want uh, to assign about half of the Air Force. Uh, to this guy. That's a bit too much. Mm, that's right. Oh yeah, I can see uh, how we're losing men then. It's probably because of this. Uh, Our army and our navy especially should be able to deal with them. Let's see if we are getting casualties from this. Yeah, we are definitely getting casualties from this. Okay. So if we want to keep the casualties as low as they were, we probably should uh, forbid uh, these regions for the navies. And also I should stop sending these guys over uh, right now.
Okay, I would say both armies are fine. Supplies are not great, but they are fine. So let's start uh, this offensive and let's start uh, this offensive. Double offensive. We go for Leningrad and Minsk. Maybe this one, this one is fine. We can allow this one. I forgot about the research. We upgrade uh, mechanized. Right. Yeah, I should stop assigning them, I said. So, by the way, we want uh, these guys uh, to cover these regions as well. Right. Now, the Soviet Union has a lot of divisions, uh, but they are positioned uh, very poorly. So soon it will ti be time to destroy them. And also right now it's not time for the collaboration government. Why are we not getting it? Okay, we got uh, this push done well. It's not entirely finished yet, though. Leningrad is taken. And I think we're going to produce a bit more uh, mechanized. The idea is that uh, the sooner we can get uh, uh, motorized replaced, uh, the more we can reduce uh, our casualties. Keep building infrastructures everywhere. Right. Okay, we can stop this push. And uh, this one is almost done too, so we can stop this one too. Let's finish the encirclement. Very nice. We are very happy with, with uh, what is happening here. I'm sad we lost some uh, men to uh, transportation navies uh, in convoys. 
Because our casualties are probably going to be a bit higher than in the screenshot I shared a while ago. But I knew that would be hard to reproduce. Now we need to rearrange the armies a little bit. Uh, this is a tricky situation. Uh, now the next uh, hubs are not as close uh, as the previous ones. So at this point I think we are going for this encirclement here. So we go for Smolensk. With the main army. So let's position them for that. Yeah, something like this. We want the motorized to be with them. But we want to make some adjustments to the regular army. And what I want is uh, I want the defensive army to take care of this upper front here. And I want this army to be a bit less uh, stretched, ideally. So, cover something like this. I also want this army to cover a bit better this southern front. Unfortunately, it's uh, a bit heavy in terms of um, adjusting the armies constantly. It's quite a lot to do. But that's okay. If you manage your armies well, you don't need to micromanage your units while pushing, which, in my opinion, is uh, more annoying. Now, here I see an obvious choice, which would be to go down here and encircle everything which is in here, which will be massive. Let's go on and do that. Yeah, I would go all the way to Vinicia probably with one push. We need to give them some time to reorganize. To be honest, uh, though, maybe it's better to get this in Sacrament done. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do that. This is a very easy one to get, so probably a wiser choice for now. Speaking of railways, damn the Soviet Union should, should thank me, I'm building more railways than they ever did. This land will be more developed than ever after I'm, I'm, I'm done with them. I had the feeling that I was missing something here, so there was a little bit there, which wasn't uh, fully taken. That's okay, because we're going to destroy these units very soon. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just go here, get rid of these guys. very cold. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, by the way, we got uh, 8,000 mechanized. Uh, now, probably not during the push. That's not the best time to switch. But as soon as we're done with this push and encirclement, we are going to switch uh, motorized with mechanized. No, 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 I don't want you to attack them. No, 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 no. Stop immediately. We 
can stop this push and uh, do it manually now. They have a lot of divisions in there. Okay, now in terms of focuses, we are pretty much free after this one. Uh, there isn't much good uh, in the tree of uh, Germany, so you can go for one of these. Uh, but we don't really need these ones either. So at this point, I would probably go for the uh, planes oriented ones. We get a discount, 100% discount for light aircrafts here, another 100% here, and then discounts to rocket technology and so on. So I would go down this path. Okay, now that we're done with this push, uh, I'm very eager to replace our motorized with uh, mechanized. So let's go on and do that. Uh, this will reduce our casualties even further. It does increase uh, the supply use uh, a bit, uh, sadly. But it does increase uh, all of the stats as well. So let's do it. Now we will need to fix the armies a little bit. Uh, I also need to set these guys again on their job, but I'm not going to do it now. So at first it will say that we don't have them, but they will uh, they will be there, don't worry. Okay, so these guys... Uh, something like this. These guys... Uh, something like this. Let's prepare for the push. This time we go for this area. Yeah, something like this is perfect. Oh, did we already get the mechanized? It looks like we did. So let's check. Yeah, we, we even have an abundance of mechanized, but it's better to have a bit more than, than a bit less, of course. So at this point, we can reduce the production of mechanized to something like 5 or 10. No, no, this is way too many. We don't really need them anymore for now. We'll, uh, we'll keep upgrading them later. And we can just uh, build more tanks uh, so that they're all upgraded to the best level, the best possible tiers. So let's go for more, even more tanks. And we have a lot of factories. So. so many that we actually need uh, to import some resources. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, sure. Perfect. I think we can go for this uh, push up here. Everything seems ready, so let's go. Of course, our stats are now even better. Alright. 
Yeah, we got the planning, so let's start the offensive down here as well. There is a place in which we are actually struggling to push. That's very Fehler. interesting. Okay, we now should have the complete air superiority. We may use uh, some extra supplies in here though. It's going much uh, easier down here. Angetreten. Okay, down here it's time to end them. All right. First we will need to rearrange these divisions a little bit, sadly. It's something very annoying about uh, encirclements you get uh, when you have um, friendly uh, um, states, countries or puppets next to it. Uh, it messes up the front completely, as you can easily see here to the point that it's usually better to micromanage these uh, armies uh, rather than just let them push you know what though i like that airport okay in the end everything went well here too right. right. stop decrypting my stuff dude not going to help you anyway yeah i'm going to stop this push Now it's time to rearrange our tanks. Because we have another big encirclement here to to close. Yeah, our motorized uh, is uh, really not uh, where it should. Oh, actually, no. Uh, no, 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 not, not yet. I want Smolens to be ours. We will need to close this encirclement fast because I'm actually moving away our divisions in there. So before these guys can move out of here, we need to push them. We can push these ones too, but again, it will get uh, a little bit messy with the fronts. Ideally here, yeah, see, see what just happened. They completely messed up suddenly. So ideally you really want to micromanage the divisions when getting these encirclements. Los, los, los. Ausrücken. Ausrücken. Right. But these are massive encirclements, so these are insane casualties for uh, for the soviet union this is where their army is ending let's uh, give it a look at uh, 22,000 to 1.7 millions million it's not going to be as good as uh, in my screenshot, but it's going to be crazy good still. Okay, we're done uh, with this encirclement. Uh, it's time to go for another one here. Actually, I think we could go for a push and get uh, Moscow at this point. We also get another encirclement down here. Achtung. 
Yeah, let's get Moscow. Something a bit different I want to try with uh, with Moscow, with the Moscow push. Like a broader front line. Let's see how it goes. Okay, down here instead, uh, we're going for something very simple. Sure that they are with us this time. Well, we cannot get more steel than this. Nobody has it. I knew I would forget about it. And oh, no, no, there is something wrong with this guy. What's wrong with him? Send the other ones too. Something clearly wrong with him. With him. Weird stuff is happening there. Okay, now we can start our collaboration government in the States. Let's do it. We're a bit late. I don't know why. I think it got bugged. Or oh, for some reason it wasn't building the spy network. But that's uh, okay. It will be fine from now. And now that we have three spies uh, with the automatically repeat, they will actually do it. So we don't have to worry about it anymore, which is much better. Okay, we can definitely go for this southern push. This one is much easier. Also, it's no longer winter and I can see the push going a lot better. Let's say we added some challenge to this uh, Barbarossa. I mean, doing Barbarossa in summer is easy, but do it in winter. Okay, let's uh, push with them too. Let's try this uh, broad frontline push. Probably more casualties. Hey guys, I love your encirclements, but close them, please. Oh. Oh, okay, I think this one we can uh, we can close right away. They don't actually have that many divisions in here. Yeah. 
And uh, here we can probably push a little bit more. Let's go for uh, Dnipro Petrovsk. Oh, is it going on the way to Moscow? Oh, I like that encirclement. I like the fact that we are already getting to Moscow. Let's also get uh, Zaporizhia. Okay, now I don't particularly like the fact that there are no divisions here. Angetreten. Yeah, because they got completely messed up for some reason. So let's uh, try to fix this. Maybe too late, but Achtung. we will try. It would be amazing if uh, Hoi 4 had a better system for self-management for divisions. This is honestly quite annoying, but Befehle. they do tend to get messed up. Uh, a bit more frequently than you would like. And Moscow is down. We're going to get this area and then we're going to stop this push. Casualties wise, uh, 23,000. Okay, very satisfied. Now, this uh, is a bit of uh, a big encirclement, maybe a bit too big, to be honest, but uh, it's okay. We're going to get it. Now, I hate Crimea because uh, it's kind of annoying to take it. It creates a new front. Ideally, you want to micromanage a bit better, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Instead, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, let's check the supply hubs. Uh, yeah, we're going to take this part uh, of uh, Ukraine. So we're going to try another broad front line attack here. Like this. And that's perfect. While uh, up here, we are going to wait uh, for our divisions to be positioned a little bit better. But then we're going to close this encirclement because it's honestly too big. I would say we do it uh, probably from, from here.
Achtung! Come some planning bonds. They still have a lot of divisions in here. And I think we can start uh, board offensives at once, so we can see a lot of green numbers in here. This is a big push for the Soviet Union. So technically you should protect this area, but they usually don't expand from here in my experience. So I'm not going to care in this case. Looks good to me. I think I'm not going to change anything with what is happening. Got a big encirclement here. Oh, they are actually expanding from there. That's a bit annoying, but we can take care of that later. That's also annoying. Oh, this is very annoying though. Okay, this is something we don't really want. That's why it's better to pay attention to what is happening. But that's okay. We will take care of it now. It's because the fronts get messed up. Uh, that's uh, that's why this is happening. Completely messed up. Okay, let's uh, stop these pushes and do it manually then. Oh, it ended up being another encirclement, so I'm not going to complain about it in the end. So probably some casualties there. No, not even much. There's no one there. Okay, we'll need to get some people back in position now, but uh, it's okay. I'm really curious to know where these tanks are. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Your offensive line was there, so it really makes sense that you went 100,000 kilometers away. Let's plan something with these upper ones. Uh, there isn't much to plan here because we are running out of places to conquer, but I think we can go for another broad push, uh, broad push for this area. Why was that guy attacking there? That caused me some casualties for sure. Okay, now let's take care of these guys here. Technically, we could take Crimea at this point. A couple of tanks are more than enough for that. 
And these guys seem ready, so let's go. Angetreten. Befehle. Bereit. Angetreten. Okay, now all consider that I think we can go for another push with this second army and we can probably go for Stalingrad. And Krasnodar. But I really want you guys to finish the job here. I mean, of course, the casualties we inflicted to the Soviet Union are absolutely insane. So at this point, yeah, they still have an army, but it's a fairly small army because we disintegrated them with encirclements. So... It's basically a formality at this point. They are also fairly close to falling down, probably with Stalingrad the where we land, because we had the collaboration governments. So... We can uh, we can actually keep pushing. I'm not even sure they have a decent arm in here. What are we doing here, boys? Could be interesting to see if we can actually rush Stalingrad. These tanks are doing some very, very weird stuff. Like, too weird for my taste, actually, but... But this may actually end the war. Yeah, it is. So, the war is over, and actually I'm fairly happy because we were able to reproduce uh, the same stats uh, as in my screenshot. I think it was 24,000, now it's 25,000. Um, I can't remember exactly when we started the offensive against the Soviet Union, I believe it was November. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. It's, uh, what, nine months? It was seven, I believe, in my, in my test, but I started a bit later, because I finished in uh, August. But again, guys, this is quite insane, you know, Barbarossa over with 25,000 casualties uh, is quite insane. Yeah, so that's it. Let's uh, officially end this war. And there we go. Now this is a peace conference that I like. Because this is an easy one. We take their basically non-existent navy. By the way, keep in mind that most of the casualties were from uh, convoys raiding. I think we lost like 10,000 men in, in the Soviet Union. We're going to get uh, resource rights and war reparations. Uh, from the Soviet Union and then we're going to get the same from uh, Mongolia as well. So now Germany controls most of the world. What's happening here? Wait, is Yugoslavia not my puppet anymore? Oh, they are not my puppet anymore. I see, I see. So I guess uh, we will take care of Yugoslavia. This is why I, we balkanize them, by the way, because uh, they do some weird stuff and they stop being our puppets. We, we don't like that. That's all for this video, but I think I may continue this run and go for the United States. Now, we do need to, to make some plannings for the United States. I want to go from Canada this time. Well, I usually go from here with the naval invasion of Florida. From the Bahamas, I believe. Uh, this time I want to try from uh, Canada. And uh, before we do that, uh, we need to develop Canada a lot. So in the next episode, we're going to prepare for that. And then we're going to carry on... Uh, the invasion of the United States and see how it goes. Uh, well, a run with the, with the German Reich, with Nazi Germany, has to end uh, with an invasion of the United States. We need to see a fascist uh, United States at the end of this run, which would also be a good introduction to the next uh, series of videos and guides that I'm going to make. I decided that the United States are going to be the, the next main uh, major country that I will cover with a country guide. We are not going to go for Japan now because Japan is very easy and very boring to invade. So I'm going to skip Japan. But the United States may be fun. Now this video will probably be released uh, more or less when the next DLC comes out uh, for Hearts of Iron. And uh, Brazil is going to be a big part of the next DLC. So I'm definitely going to play Brazil. Brazil is going to be the next uh, minor nation that I will play. I had a lot of fun with Turkey, but I don't have a lot of experience yet with minor nations. 
And so, yeah, Brazil will be the next one. United States for majors, Brazil for minors will be a lot of fun. Guys, keep following the channel. If you enjoyed this video, this guide, uh, please don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.